are going to cover a very important concept called backpropagation. In our previous lectures, we designed our system using a very simple linear model which takes x as input and y hat as an output. We first design our loss function and then we compute the gradient of loss with respect to w and then we apply the gradient descent algorithm to identify w which minimizes the loss. And this process is called the training process. For the gradient, we just manually computed it because the, our model was extremely simple. However, if we have a very complicated network like this, and then we often are using non-linearities between these nodes. In this case, manually computing these gradients becomes very difficult or even impossible. Much better way is that just using chain rule on the computational graph. So let me explain what is chain rule first. So suppose we have a two functions like g underscore and f underscore like this, which means that g underscore get x as an input and then produce g as an output, and they are connected, which means g is used as input of f and then produce f as an output. So what we want to know here is that we want to compute the gradient of f with respect to x, which means that df gx. Of course, this combination is not too complicated. Probably we can just compute at once. However, a better way is that we just divide them into two functions and compute the gradient one by one. Let's start with f underscore. So the input of f underscore is g. So finding out the gradient of f with respect to g is trivial. At the same manner, we can compute the gradient of g with respect to x, which is also easy because we know what is g underscore. And then basically we just combine these two together to compute the final gradient. This is called a chain rule. A very nice thing about this chain rule is that let's say this is connected with many other nodes eventually it will produce loss. So our final goal here is that we want to compute the gradient of loss with respect to x. So in this case, for somehow we cannot compute everything together. Then, then what we can do is that we can compute each gradient and we just combine them. This is called the chain rule and the backpropagation. I'm going to show you one concrete example. Suppose this is just one node in a, a big, huge network. There is a function called f which takes x and y and produces s, g. Now, of course, it's connected with many other nodes and then eventually will produce loss. Now, what we want to know here is that we want to know how, what is the gradient of loss with respect to x. Also, same here. We want to know that gradient of loss and with respect to x. But we're gonna apply the chain rule, which means that we can compute one by one. So the first step is that we can compute the local gradient. We know what is the function f. So finding out the gradient of g with respect to each input is trivial. So we can compute this and this. And then a second. Assuming that we, for somehow, we got this value from our previous computations. And then we just apply our chain rule to compute this one, which is trivial. Like a chain rule, we just can apply this one first times our local gradients. So this is how we're going to compute one by one. So let me give you a concrete example using real values. So suppose our f, the function, is multiply. So this we call the multiply gate. And then the first thing, what we're going to do is to do forward pass for given real input. So in this case, let's say x equal 2, y 3. It's a given. And then we just compute all values 2, y 3, so g is going to be 6. 
So we just do forward pass and then memorize this value. And then the next step is that we're going to compute this local gradient. So local gradient is because we know what is this gate, it's easy. So g is x, x times y, and then we want to compute this. And then this is trivial, this, this becomes y. And then the same manner, we can compute this, this one becomes x. So we can compute the local gradient. And then for somehow, this one is given. And then we want to compute this value. So this one is already given with a 5. So it's, it's 5 times. This we already computed with y, so which is y. And then y, we know the value, so 5 times 3 here. So it becomes 15. In the same manner, also we can compute this value. So this is how we're going to apply the forward pass with a concrete value, which is given first, and then memorize the value, and then do backward propagations using the applying the chain rule. Let's apply this idea to our model, which is simple linear model. How can we draw a computational graph for this model? The idea is that we just introduce a, a multiply gate and then get x and w as an input and produce y hat like this. And how about our loss? Eventually what we want to compute is the loss of the gradient of loss. So we have to connect this loss in our graph. So it takes y hat as an input and then we need another input called the y and then here is the gate minus gate and then we do have a square gate so it's two operations so we have two different nodes one is minus gate one is square gate first minus gate with the y head minus y and they will produce value called s and s will be input of the square gate eventually become a loss and then first we're gonna apply the forward pass for a given value x is y y equal 2 and then w is 1 like our previous example then for the pass is trivial just we put the value here x is 1 w is 1 and then time is becomes 1 and then now y is given to 2 1 minus 2 becomes minus 1 and then this square is becomes 1 so this is how we're gonna do for the pass just compute this value and memorize this value and our second step is doing backward propagation. In order to do this, we first need to compute the local gradients for each gate. We know the what's the gate, and identifying the local gradients becomes trivial. So for example here, this gate is square, so we can compute this directly. So the input is S, so that the gradient for this is 2S. In a similar manner, we can compute all the local gradients because we know what's the function and what is the input output relationship so it's trivial to compute and then we just apply one by one in backward manner and just compute these values so here this gradient d loss ds what is that this is 2s and then what is s in this case is minus 1 so that 2s becomes minus 2 and now we're going to move in to compute the gradients for the next. So in this case, we want to know that d loss and dy hat. So why we don't have to compute this gradient for this x and y value because we cannot change it. Only we can compute the gradient that we can change. So in this case, we just uh, make this one as a chain rule. And then we already know what is this value, which is minus 2. And then we also know this just two times and then we find the gradients. And then we move in and then we want to just compute the gradients of loss with respect to W. And then we can express this one using the chain rule like this. And then here we already computed this one which is minus 2. And then we note our local gradients which is uh, X in this case. Is, and then we know the value of X here. So we just do this and then we get this minus 2 as our final gradient. And if you can remember our previous 
example and their result, probably you see these numbers when we computed the gradient manually when x is 1, y is 2, the gradient was minus 2, which is exactly the same value using uh, this computational graph and backward propagation. As an exercise, we can try with a different x value and then see you can manually compute these gradients using this uh, computational graph and then to chain rule. And then now we introduce this bias term here, so we add it on, and then see if you can also compute the gradients using this computational graph and then backward propagation. Let's move on to our hands-on section. So very nice thing about the PyTorch is that you don't have to conduct these back propagations by yourself. This PyTorch can automatically rebuild the computational graph and then compute the, all the gradients for you. Only one thing you need to do is to use just their variable. So first, in order to use the variable, just to create a tensor and then use this variable wrapper. And then you cannot just say, oh, I need to compute the gradient, and that's it. And then after that, we just build on some operations on using these variables, and then they're going to build this computational graph automatically for you. In our example, just we are just using this w as, a, as before. So this forward function just to get x as an um, input, and then it times xw. This is variable. So all the, all the operations with the variable will construct a computational graph. All the others are the same. Once we build a computational graph using the variable, so it's, it looks something like this. Some variable w, and then certain node, and then we compute the loss. So it's L will be here. So this is how we're going to compute our loss function and then get L. And then because everything here is computational graph, we can call L dot backward special function. And then this is exactly doing the backward operations as we explained, and then compute the gradients of every variable. Then how we're going to get the this loss gradients with respect to w. So this will be stored in w dot grad data. So we can just use this data. If you want to print out only one value, just you can just use like this. Since our w is now variable, usually it keeps the data, the real value as w.data. So updating is w.data minus this alpha. And then this is our gradient that is automatically computed with using this backward function. And then at each iteration, we just initialize our gradients. So this is our entire training process. If you see the output of this program, which is very similar to our previous example using the manual computation. So you can compare these two output, they are actually almost the same. So in summary, using the PyTorch, we can just perform backward and uh, forward and backward propagations very easy. So PyTorch will automatically draw or construct this computational graph as long as you are using this variable. And then we just call this loss function with uh, the input value, and then we'll conduct the forward path. And then if you want to compute the gradients using this backward, just call this last value, dot l dot backward. Then we will do backward propagation and compute all the gradients. So especially we are interested in this value, the gradient of loss with respect to w, then will be, this value will be saved in w dot grad. And then we can just, using this w.grad data, we can update. So the value of w is saved in the data. Now w is the variable. So we just update this data using this alpha with our gradients. Then this is how we're going to update. It's very simple. Using PyTorch, just they can compute this gradient automatically for us. As an exercise, you can try to implement everything using 
NumPy or just pure Python without using PyTorch so that you can fully understand the concept of backpropagations and this computational graph. And then in the similar manner, you can just compute the gradients with a slightly a different model. And then you can try to do manually and then also you can try to using the PyTorch. In the next lecture, now we're going to jump into the PyTorch and then fully leverage this PyTorch to build the model.